Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Lionheart Ministries. I'm Scott Jansen, and my message today is called Transformed. And as believers, I think we could all agree that one of the primary goals is to become more like Jesus. One of the other primary goals is for us to know God as he knows us. Amen? So to know God intimately and to allow him to transform us to become more like Jesus. And that's what my message is about today. Transformed. Now, I want to go back and I want to look at this word called transformed. But it's a word that we call in English metamorphosis. Now, many of you know that word because you're going back to your science classes and you're remembering the transformation that takes place in a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly. Well, it's much the same with us because this word metamorphosis in scripture is is basically to change into another form, which fits perfectly with the idea of God's creation of a caterpillar that goes through this metamorphosis, this, this change that's uncomfortable, but it becomes a butterfly. That is the destiny of every caterpillar that God creates. The destiny is not for a caterpillar to simply walk along the earth. Its destiny is to fly. And much like us as believers, we go through a metamorphosis where God is, the Holy Spirit is bringing change into our life so that we can fly and we don't have to stay grounded all of our life. The problem comes when we don't want to change, when we resist change. And so we never come to the, the, the full experience of where we're supposed to be. And so there's areas of our life that have not been transformed. And we need to give up those areas to the Holy Spirit and say, transform my life. Do a metamorphosis in my life. And how many of you know, change is not always comfortable, is it? Transformation is not always comfortable. It can be painful. It can take you out of your comfort zone. And I know a lot of people, uh, especially us as men, we don't like change too much, right? We like to stick with the same routine. But the Holy Spirit says, I want to transform your life. I want you to look more and more like Jesus. And so that's what we want to talk about today. And when it comes to our relationship with God, we're not, hopefully, we're not just satisfied satisfied with maintaining the status quo. We're not just satisfied by saying, I'll just stay the same the rest of my life. Hopefully, there's something in us that says, I want to change. I want to become more like Jesus. We're not content to continue year after year, with the same ideas, the same attitudes, the same habits that we've always had. But rather, we want to believe that God can change us, that he has the power to change us, and that he will change us. Because it's a cooperation, isn't it? There's a cooperation on our part that says, God, I, I, I accept the metamorphosis that you want to do in my life. And then God goes to work and he does a change in your heart. And But it comes to a willingness on our part to say, God, change me. So it is true, for example, that, that God loves us just the way we are. When we first became believers, God says, you know, I love you. I love the way you are. I love who you are. But he loves us so much as well that he doesn't want us to stay the same. He wants us to grow. He wants us to change. He wants us to overcome and to have victory in our life. He wants to shape us and strengthen us into, into the image of his son. And I find that there are many times where we resist change. And so it's... It's interesting because, you know, if you think about the caterpillar, 
It has to go through these changes to become the butterfly. But it doesn't become a butterfly overnight. It has to go through this change. Now, there might be areas in your life where you feel like you can fly like a butterfly. And there might be other areas of your life where you feel like you're still grounded. And the ultimate goal is that is that your whole life is a butterfly. You could just fly. You're free. You've given up the identity of a caterpillar and you've taken up the new identity as a butterfly. Amen. So he wants to rework those values in our life. He wants to rework the inner wiring of who we are to the DNA of Christ, not the DNA of our old self, our old sinful self. He wants us to become like Jesus. And so I want to share some scripture with you this morning. And or it might be evening where you are, wherever you are, whenever you're listening. Um, I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 as the first uh, scripture in verses 16 to 18. And uh, I want you to listen to these verses uh, from Paul the Apostle where he says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord... The veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Or in some translations, there is freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? We are being transformed into the likeness of Christ. And I like the way the New Living Translation renders this verse as well, where it says, as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, you hear that? The Spirit of the Lord working in us, within us. We become more and more like Him and reflect His glory more and more. Wow. So when I read that, what I'm thinking of is our cooperation with the Holy Spirit. He wants to change us, but we want to stay the same. And there's a war that goes on. And and, and the Holy Spirit wants total surrender from us. And we're only willing sometimes to give up so much. He wants to change us for the better. And that process began on the first day that we trusted Christ. And it will continue throughout our entire life. Because transformation is something that will will carry you right through to the very end. (laughs) And so when you come to the day when you get to leave this earth and, and join Christ in heaven, you should look more like Jesus than you did the first day that you trusted Jesus. Amen? Hopefully a lot more like Jesus. So let me, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. And so it's by faith that we know that this new metamorphosis has taken place there's already that change that's taken place in the spirit by faith by faith we're, we we became righteous now that's not something that you work hard to become um, so that one day that you're really righteous before god because of the transformation you're going through no that was an immediate transformation that happened your eternal security was secured right there. And you were, you were born again into a new creation. You have the righteousness of Christ. Amen. But the Bible also talks about nailing and crucifying the desires of our flesh. And becoming, in, becoming transformed. The renewing of our mind. Amen. It's a journey that will be complete only when Christ returns. So this is a journey that we go through. And it's in heaven that we are made perfect. Until that time, we're all works in progress. Uh, I think it was Billy Graham's wife, um, Ruth Graham. I think it's on her uh, tombstone. 
that, and I could be wrong, but I think it says something like, um, something like uh, still under construction, something like that. And, that. and that's a really neat idea because we're all being constructed every day and we're not finished until we see him face to face. We're all a work in progress. And uh, let me just take you to Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. He says, and this is Paul's heart. He's saying, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Jesus Christ first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. He's being very blatant. He hasn't achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Amen? It's not a matter of God doing everything while we just go along for the ride. Nor is it a matter of us taking matters into our own hands and doing everything ourselves. It's a cooperation. It's a relationship between us and God. So what does it take to see real spiritual transformation? And the one thing I can say for sure is that it takes cooperation with the Holy Spirit. It takes cooperation between, between us, saying, I surrender, transform me. We be transparent before the Holy Spirit. We allow him to transform us. You know, there was a story that, uh, that I recently was looking at by Francis Chan. And he wrote this little children's kind of story called The Big Red Tractor and the Little Village. And it's actually kind of an interesting story because in this village, they don't even really know what a tractor is. But they see this big red tractor that's been given to them. And there's this farmer named Dave who operates this tractor. But they don't really actually know how to operate it. So they, part of the village, they would uh, stand in front of the tractor and they would pull the tractor while the other people would stand behind it and push the tractor. And they would, for three months of the year they would try to plow, uh, you know, plow the fields by pulling and pushing. And they would go throughout the whole field. And by the end, you know, of course, the, the rain would come and the sunshine and they would gather together and they would reap the harvest and they would have just enough, just enough to feed the village after three months of work. Small field. And then one day, uh, Farmer Dave is in the attic of his uh, of his house, going through some of his grandfather's stuff, and he sees an owner manual of of the big red tractor, and he's reading it, and he's just he he spends the whole night studying this book, and he's just amazed. He he's realizing things that this tractor does that he never knew it could do. It can actually run on its own. I mean, you can actually turn the ignition, and the thing powers itself. And, and you, you can just go along for the ride, basically. And so he tells the village this, and they all are in disbelief and thinking, okay, you're crazy. It can't do that. It, this thing doesn't do that kind of thing. You're crazy. And so they're mocking him, and they just want to keep on doing things the same way as, the, as the, how, how they've done things all along. And so... One day, Farmer Dave gets it running, and he gets so excited that throughout the night, he plows the entire field in one day, in one night. And everyone wakes up, and they see the field plowed, and they say, it's a miracle. Angels must have come and plowed our field. And then some little boy says, hey, no, 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 look. Look over there. It's Farmer Dave, and he's, a, he's asleep on the wheel of the big red tractor. And they all finally come to the realization it's true. This tractor really can do what Farmer Dave said it could do. And he tells the story because there needs to be a cooperation. There needs to be an understanding that we have a part to play 
But the Holy Spirit in us can accomplish infinitely more than we think. We think that we have to push and pull and do all the things by ourselves. When the truth is, we have the Spirit of God living in us. The power that can get things done a lot quicker than if we just try doing it on our own. And in, actually, if you watch the video on YouTube, The Big Red Tractor, it talks more about how the church in cooperation with God. But I'm using the illustration as well of the Holy Spirit. But it amazes me that we can think that we could do so much better apart from the Spirit, that we just don't need any help. And we know better. We know that we need the Holy Spirit. And because uh, he is the key to transformation in our life and in our communities. And I want to show you the scripture in, in, in Acts. I thought, you know, this is how it started in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So this is the long-awaited Holy Spirit. This is something that Jesus was prophesying about in his ministry, saying there comes a time when I'm going to be gone, but the Comforter, the Advocate, is going to come into my place, and he's going to come, and he's going to fill you. And he's going to come upon the believers and empower you, just as he promised. So from this moment in history, the church has never been the same. The people who witnessed these people, they thought they were drunk. But Peter shares the vision behind this event in uh, verses 15 to 21. He says, these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. Now, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those last days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will be turned blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So God's promise here, God's promise is that he will pour out his spirit on all people. Isn't that amazing? God is going to pour out his spirit on all people. I remember a few years ago I had a vision like this where I saw this massive bucket in the sky and it was pouring water upon the people. But it was touching everybody not just believers but everybody and that's what revival is supposed to do it's not just supposed to transform us it's supposed to spill over and touch everyone around us and that's what happens during a revival it's just not a bunch of uh, churches getting together for meetings revival is when the unbelievers are being touched and they're coming to christ amen and so this is one of the signs of spiritual transformation is that the Spirit of God is being poured out upon your life. And then Peter addresses the crowd and tells them what must happen. In 38 to 41, he says, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Now that's a pretty good day. Do you see what happened? From this experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, they experienced a personal transformation. And now that transformation has come to the community and 3,000 people are saved. I want to show you one more scripture about how the Holy Spirit transforms us. And this is a, a really neat story in Acts. And the church, the early church was under constant threat. 
And you can see this in Acts chapter 4, verses 29 to 31. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through your name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. So what happened? They were threatened. They were coming under intimidation. They prayed. The place shook. They were filled with the Spirit. And then they went out and preaching with boldness. And this is the way it should be for all of us. It could only happen with the Holy Spirit and his cooperation. He's the one that empowered them. He is the one that gave them boldness. If they went out on their own effort, they would have turned back because of fear because of intimidation. And these are the things that God wants to do through our lives. But unless you allow God to transform you, then it might not happen. So this is really what I want to encourage you with today is to honor the Holy Spirit, the relationship you have with him, because he can come and transform your life. Amen. I remember uh, just in closing here, when, when Penny and I first got married, we were having a Bible study out of our home and, and for the young adults in our church. And I remember we did a special uh, Bible study on the Holy Spirit. And we were doing some videos uh, called Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And I am telling you, the Holy Spirit showed up when we talked about him, when we honored him, when we spoke about him. It, the whole atmosphere in the home was electric. I mean, it was unbelievable. And so when the video finished, I mean, it the, the presence of God was so thick on that place. People were, were weeping. People were speaking in tongues that have never spoken tongues before. People were, I mean, you were getting words for people about healing and different things that were taking place. I mean, and it transformed our life. Everyone there could remember that day when the Holy Spirit showed up. And why did he show up? I believe simply because we were talking about him, because we were honoring him, because we were inviting him to come and transform our life. And I believe that we can do the same. Every day you can talk and you can ask the Holy Spirit to transform your life because he wants you to be transformed and become more like Jesus. And so I want to encourage you today to develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit in your life. And allow him to transform your life. Because he wants you to become more and more like Jesus. Amen. Let's pray today. Lord, I thank you so much for giving us your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you're doing in our life. And we pray that you would bring transformation in our hearts and our lives. That we could become more like Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we want to live in victory. We want to be overcomers. And we just pray that you would help us to do that today. Help us transform us. We just surrender every area of our life that's not transformed. And we ask you to come and, and just do your work in our life. Make us more like you. Help us to reach those people in our community with revival. And just touch us, Holy Spirit, in a way that we would know and remember the day that we met with you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. We will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification button. And we will see you next week.